Hi, this is Kes McCormick, and in this course, we're going to be using examples from Sweden, Denmark, and Norway, which together is Scandinavia. So why Scandinavia? This is a very good question to ask at the start of our course on greening the economy. I grew up in Australia, but I've been living in Sweden for more than 10 years. We can learn many lessons from the Scandinavian experiences with greening economies that can be applied to other countries and contexts like Australia, but we should probably ask a Swede. Thanks, Kes. My name is Håkan Rode, and I grew up here in Sweden. So I know that for many people from other places, Scandinavia often makes this great impression of being very green and a prosperous place. But at the same time, many Scandinavians are disappointed that not enough is being done about environmental problems, and that Scandinavia has such a large ecological footprint. When we say ecological footprint, we mean the size of environmental impact of a person, a product, an organization, a city, or a country. I'm afraid that the ecological footprint of Scandinavia is still pretty high. For example, in the ranking of the Worldwide Fund for Nature in 2010, Denmark had the third largest ecological footprint in the world, Sweden number 13 and Norway number 17. So as a Swede, I can see that we still have much more to do. Yes, but Scandinavian countries also have a high standard of living and well-being. And the key is to balance this with impacts on our environment. And there are many objective indicators. For example, the Better Life Index, which shows that Scandinavian countries are performing very well. Scandinavian countries and cities are also rated in the top 10 of the Green Economy Index. An ecological footprint is one way to measure, and it is also worth noting that with this measure, Sweden, for instance, has a footprint that is still lower than its biocapacity, which means that it is able to sustain its own footprint. Yeah, but we should remember that part of this is due to our geographic and our historic circumstances. We have an abundance of natural resources, a favourable climate, can be argued, soils for agriculture, waterways for hydroelectric dams, and we have not experienced wars or organised violence in the last centuries, as many other countries in the world. We're very lucky to have such conditions. True, geography and history have clearly played a role. Still, Scandinavia has some of the most advanced environmental policies and legislation in the world. The countries in Scandinavia have been experimenting with policies and practices to green their economies since the 1970s, and these experiences can serve as really valuable lessons. Yes, it's true that Scandinavians do really value the environment and nature. And yes, it's been on the political agenda since the 1970s. But it's worth noting that many of these policies, like you said, have been just that, experiments, and they have not always been successful. Yeah, this is exactly why Scandinavia is so interesting. Geography and history aside, Scandinavians have been trying to combine economic development and environmental protection for decades. In fact, what makes Scandinavia such a good place to learn about greening the economy is not just its successes, but also the failures and challenges along the way. And today, Scandinavia has managed to make a lot of progress in addressing many environmental problems. Indeed we've managed to solve some of the most acute local problems. There's not so much visible pollution in Scandinavia, cities are relatively green and safe, and most of the countryside is also unspoiled. But some people are concerned that we simply export pollution to other countries. We use electric appliances, wear clothes, eat food, and drive cars that are produced in global supply chains. Thus, we preserve our own environment but we still affect the environment globally. Yes, this is true. This is still a challenge for Scandinavian countries, but they are trying to reduce their footprint by encouraging the design, production and consumption of environmentally friendly products. And governments and businesses are working with policies to reduce environmental impacts at all levels. For example, Sweden has a goal to become oil free by 2050. If this strategy succeeds, Sweden will not need to import oil from faraway places. Yes, it's a continuing challenge that we have to work on. I think we both recognise that Scandinavia is a good place to start looking for solutions. We have a tradition of transparent societies where most types of information is widely accessible. But we must remember to look at both successes and failures. There is much we can learn from the rich experiences here in Scandinavia by exploring what has been done, what is still being done, and the challenges that remain. By looking at these challenges in a comprehensive way, we can move forward with greening the economy 
not just in Scandinavia, but throughout the world.